As a huge fan of macro photography, you can imagine my delight when I heard that Panasonic were releasing the 100mm f2.8 macro lens and that I was going to get my hands on one. Weighing in at a mere 300 grams and measuring just 82 millimeters, this is the world's lightest and smallest full frame macro lens. You join me here in the rugged wild woodlands of the Forest of Dean, hence my manly pose. That's enough of that. Now, having bigged up both my love for macro photography and my anticipation for this lens, the stakes are high for me to produce something worthy. So join me as I once again put my job on the line and try to find out what it can do. Oh, my hip. So before we get into it, let's take a look at the lens itself. It is of course fantastic for macro photography thanks to its fast f2.8 aperture, its one-to-one -one magnification ratio and its close focusing distance of just 20.4 centimeters, which is significantly closer than any of its competitors. Add to this a nine bladed diaphragm for dreamy bokeh and fantastic depth of field and you also have a lens that's perfect for portraiture. Panasonic have even gone so far as to print the lettering in gray to minimize reflections when shooting up close. The lens fits in perfectly with the rest of the Lumix Prime range thanks to its unified size, weight and filter size. Focus breathing has also been matched across all the lenses and this is fantastic for anyone out there who's looking to do focus stacking. Lastly, the lens is weather resistant and can be operated in temperatures as low as minus 10 degrees Celsius, which is a must when you live in this wonderful Isle of England, I'm sure. GoPro POV view! Although actually what I just said there was GoPro point of view view, but uh, if I didn't do that, it wouldn't work with the song, would it? And uh, that's what's important. So yes, we're heading off into the woods now and we're gonna get some macro photography. We're talking fungi, we're talking leaf, we're talking squirmy bits. Let's do this. It looks as though we may even have zogs, whatever they are. Who knows what this day holds for us? Trowel beasts. We have trowel beasts afoot. So the first thing I'm noticing is just indeed how compact and lightweight this lens is. When paired up with a camera like I have the S5 II, this weighs in at just over a kilogram, which is pretty impressive. I'm using this handheld, well, of course handheld, but one-handed even. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, the lens itself weighs 300 grams and it measures 82 millimeters. And that's nearly two thirds the size and half the weight of any of its competition. Panasonic has done this by using three spherical lenses. There's usually two used in uh, similar lenses, as well as adopting a double focus unit. Between the two of these things, they managed to shave off 45 millimeters and, uh, and the rest of the weight. Now, where do I go? That way for the Zog Trail, but that is not the way we go. I oh, know we're going that way. It's always quite interesting coming out with a prime lens because you, uh, just get dialed into that focal length and start finding things that you wouldn't normally find if you had, you know, if you had the uh, zoom ability. It is the rule of macro that you simply must get mushroom shots where possible. Obviously this is not going to be coming across on the GoPro, but I'm getting ridiculously close to these. Preza. Got to be careful here. Let's change that focus point, get that right down in the bottom. Now macro may very well be in the title of this lens, but it's capable of so much more than that. 100 millimeter is such a versatile focal length. You can do landscape, you can do portraiture. Of course, you've got that f2.8 aperture for that dreamy bokeh, that depth of field, so you can get some real amazing subject separation. So here we are at the heart of stone. Again, you've got that beautiful subject separation. I have actually had this lens for a couple of days, so I've used it over the course of the weekend to get a few other bits and pieces. So I am going to be dropping images that I took uh, in Sirencester yesterday. I didn't film any of that because I felt that, you know, it's important to have a boundary in work between work and home life. You know how it goes, you do it once and then it's expected of you all the time. Hey Ben, I hear that you're on holiday next week. Fancy taking a camera with you? Oh, that'd be a nice thing actually. I mean, as you're there, you might as well do a blog post. No. No. Limits. I suppose we should speak a bit about focus breathing as well, because it is very minimal. So for anyone out there who 
likes doing focus stacking. I do not have the patience. But for anyone who likes doing focus stacking images, this lens is going to be for you. I'll try and get some demonstrations now of the uh, focus, uh, the focus breathing, the I'm, I'm panicking, Zelgs. <laughs> Okay, so I think I've gotten as much as I'm going to from this location. I'm a bit disappointed. I was hoping to find a lot of mushrooms because macro photography with no mushrooms is, is, is it even macro photography? I don't think so. There are a lot of wild boar in the area, so I'm wondering how much they've been eating everything up. I've not seen really any insects or wildlife at all, which is really quite disappointing. So I'm going to try and head off to another location now before it gets too dark. And and that's also, which is, uh, and the location I've got in mind should be a good way to demonstrate the landscape cap 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 capabilities of the lens. <laughs> Things have taken a turn for the worse. I don't know if this is coming across on uh, the GoPro, but I've just uh, gone to the place where I wanted to get some landscapes and it is shrouded in mist. My beard's going everywhere. And yeah. Uh, I'm going to try and find some mushrooms at least to get some shots of that and I might at least get some atmospheric stuff but the landscape stuff is not looking so good right now. I'll see what I can get but ah uh, oh, crazy. <laughs> Obviously this lens is not just for mushrooms but it seems a shame to do to use a macro lens and not get some atmospheric shots mist is really really coming in now okay it's getting pretty bad up here now I think I'm gonna have to abort and there you have it the Panasonic 100 mm f 2.8 macro lens I really had a great time using this lens over the last couple of days I really wish that I could have gotten some landscape shots but I can't control the weather as much as I try. That being said, I was able to get some great images with this lens and I had a great time doing it. There's something about going out with a single prime lens. It just, you know, makes you look at things in such a different way. First of all, the size and weight. Now this lens is so much smaller and lighter than other 100 millimeters. It was actually, it was actually a little bit disconcerting at first. Not in a bad way, it's just, you know, you expect, you expect to be using a longer lens. Having a lens this size, but getting that 100 millimeter perspective was, Quite an interesting experience, but a good one. It weighs barely anything and takes up so little space that you don't even notice that it's there. I said earlier on in the video that this whole setup here with the S5 II, I think it comes to just over a kilogram. So I was pretty much walking around all day just like this and it wasn't fatiguing in any way whatsoever. I was very impressed with the performance of this lens. The autofocusing is fast and responsive and the bokeh is absolutely gorgeous. The focus breathing is minimal as I just demonstrated. So great news for anybody who's interested in focus stacking. It was great to have a lens of this quality in such a compact form. The 100mm is of course a very versatile lens. It can do macro and portrait landscape, although I didn't get any landscape. The one-to-one -one magnification ratio of course. Though I didn't get any human subjects, I was actually very impressed with the portraiture side of things. I managed to capture an image earlier of a wooden statue and the subject separation, the bokeh that was produced from this was just outstanding. I don't really have anything bad to say about this lens. It delivers everything that you'd expect from a 100mm macro lens in a compact and usable format. It was, just, it was just a joy to use, highly recommended. So there we have it. If you've made it this far in the video, maybe drop a like, leave a comment, maybe even subscribe if you feel inclined, and we'll see you next time. Why did nobody tell me I lost my windy muff? <laughs>